Um, but I think in terms of what we need to do differently, we need to actualize the regional approach to solving the world's problems today from Africa, for Africa and for the world. So when I look at Ghana and I see the resources that Ghana has, um, there's some priorities that the country has in terms of being a, a regional hub for recycling, for really fueling the secular economy, um, a regional hub for, 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 for uh, so a regional hub also for energy in terms of EV solar charging. Let's look at how we can bring the cost of borrow down by focusing on projects. So if we look at the fiscal challenges that Ghana has now, I think we allow the world to be cloud us too much and therefore take away from the plentiful benefits that Ghana does have and that Africa does have. We need to get to a point where, for example, instead of worrying about raising US dollars and adding that to debt, is there some exchange that we could be doing in Ghana, in other countries, where we're saying, here, here is in Ghana, we do gold exchanges for dollar today. But what about lithium exchange for gold, uh, for, for dollars, or even for other currencies? and doing, going back to the principles of bartering. So this is Madame Yvonne Ike, who is the head of Sub-Saharan Africa at the Bank of America, advising Ghana and other African leaders on how they can reduce borrowing by fully utilizing what we have on our beautiful African continent. We will listen to everything she said, but before that, I would like to stress a bit on one of her submissions, which is how she thinks the world's problem can be solved from Africa, especially how Ghana can become the regional hub for electric vehicles, particularly solar charging solutions to the world. Countries around the world are offering a variety of incentives and making infrastructure changes to encourage people to switch to electric vehicles, which Ghana is one of them. In fact, Ghana is very serious about electric vehicles because they have launched a national electric vehicle policy with tax breaks for EVs and emission taxes on gas-powered cars. Their ambitious goal is 35% of vehicles on the road to be electric by the year 2035, according to the Ghana Ministry of Transport. This Ghana's national electric vehicle policy has a phased approach, with the phase one starting from 2024 to 2026. This phase will be the preparatory phase. The key focus will be on addressing the challenges and barriers to the EV uptake. Phase two will also start from 2027 to 2035, which is also to ensure a successful takeoff and successful transition to EVs in Ghana. The target is that by the end of this phase, EVs penetration rate will be around 35%. The phase three will be from 2036 to 2045. During this phase, efforts will be made to ensure that by the year 2045, no new petrol or diesel vehicles will be sold or imported into the beautiful country Ghana. But with all these great policies and incentives, the current EV landscape in Ghana is relatively low but it is growing. There are still few EVs in the country, with hybrid electric vehicles being the most common. However, a 2022 survey showed a growing interest with some Ghanaians already enjoying the benefits like lower running cost of electric vehicles. So, Ghanaian automaker Kantanka Automobile has announced plans to develop an electric vehicle very soon. And a German Ghanaian startup called Mana Mobility is also aiming to design and produce EVs in Ghana. But according to Madame Yvonne, Ghana has a secret weapon in the EV market, which they are not utilizing it. And that secret weapon is sunshine. Unlike many developed countries, Ghana has an abundance of sunlight, perfect for powering electric vehicle charging stations across the country. So they have the potential to do more than what they have done so far. 
According to her, the country should utilize its sun by building solar-powered EV charging stations to encourage more people to adopt electric vehicles. Just like countries like Germany, the United States, France, and other developed countries are doing. She also mentioned something about recycling and agriculture. So let's hear everything from her. But before we start, please support us by liking the video and also subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for your support. Now, let's dive into it. Um, but I think in terms of what we need to do differently, we need to actualize the regional approach to solving the world's problems today from Africa, for Africa and for the world. So when I look at Ghana, and I see the resources that Ghana has. Um, there's some priorities that the country has in terms of being a, a regional hub for recycling, for really fueling the secular economy, um, a regional hub for, 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 for uh, so a regional hub also for energy in terms of EV solar charging. There's no reason why Ghana cannot, given the resources it has, like lithium, like the secure and, and more uh, user-friendly environment for attracting foreign investment for projects and for manufacturing. Why they, there's, there's no reason why that shouldn't be a priority to have solar-charged EV uh, uh, stations manufactured out of Ghana. There's agriculture as well. There's an amazing amount of research that's being done for agriculture in Ghana that needs to be actualized. So how do we do that? And, and so we talk about this quite a bit as we go around the different countries and conferences. But let's actualize that. Let's look at how we can bring the cost of borrow down by focusing on projects. So if we look at the fiscal challenges that Ghana has now, I think we allow the world to be cloud us too much and therefore take away from plentiful benefits that Ghana does have and that Africa does have. And so therefore, what I mean by that is, while we have the, while those challenges are being addressed, there are other opportunities. There are other opportunities that we can have where we can reduce the cost of borrow by focusing on projects led by private sector in the region and bringing in blended finance, use, leveraging the African DFIs a lot more in terms, of, uh, in terms of financing these projects, working with international organizations like ours. Bank of America does have a commitment to, to, uh, to deploy and galvanize $1.5 trillion of capital into areas like climate. So while there's other areas that are being fixed, there is a whole host of opportunity in areas like climate where we can focus projects in those spaces. And therefore, when we look at ratings, when we're worrying less about the ratings of the countries at this time in Africa, where, and we're looking more at the ratings of the projects and making sure those are well structured. The private sector, um, and, and it was mentioned this morning by AFDB and the EU, etc., about how we must support Afri African private sectors because they will be critical to fueling uh, growth in the future. We need data and part of what we need for data, we talk about the critical resources that we have in the continent today and the critical minerals that we have. In reality, we don't know how much we have in the different countries. We certainly don't know the value of them. We need to get to a point where, for example, Instead of worrying about raising U.S. dollars and adding that to debt, is there some exchange that we could be doing in Ghana, in other countries, where we're saying, here, here is, in Ghana, we do gold exchanges for dollar today. But what about lithium exchange for gold, uh, for, for dollars, or even for other currencies, and doing, going back to the principles of bartering, and using those principles to find sources of financing? I'd say one last thing. Uh, at, at this stage of my submission. We also need to look more in the global south and work with countries that actually need what we have. 
So in the global south, Brazil, India, China, and, and also countries like the Middle East are more interested in what we have to offer on terms that work for us financially and otherwise. And we should be looking there and doing deals there, project-based, led by the private sector, on terms that work for us. I'll stop there. Thank you. So, that is all for today's episode. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below. My name is Sheriff Harana. Have a joyful life and see you in our next video. Macrao. <laughs>